Today is September 19th. It's a little afternoon. This is a citizen's task force of the assembly public hearing process. Um, Mandy, do you want to just take that roll? Or I could uh, obviously observe everyone. We have Jim Barnett, we have Arliss Trudelewski, we have Buck Churchill, we have Andy Holman, we have Joelle Hall. Hall. Oh, where's the meeting time? We have Penny Gossie, we have Carolyn Ramsey, and we have Cheryl Richardson and Jane Emmy. So we are here. Paul and our Amanda. Um, and Amanda. Amanda. And Amanda Bowser. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, Amanda has turned on the tape recorder, so we are being recorded for posterity. Um, our agenda item today is to review the draft, which um, was uh, emailed people late last night, and the uh, drafting committee met yesterday and utilized both the information from the public hearing on September 30th, the uh, discussion that this group has had uh, previously, but particularly on the 12th, we met to discuss <coughs> how the hearing informs our thinking. And um, yesterday, the, um, the drafting committee <coughs> took both the, the, those information, the September 11th draft, and all the comments that have been received by task force members and tried to <coughs> meld it into the draft you have before you. Um, it's our, my intention, my goal today, is that we would be able to actually review the draft if there are issues that we need to discuss and uh, make a decision about that we do that today so that we are actually in a position to be able to share our draft um, recommendations with the public. The public hearing is scheduled for October 1st and so my goal is that we actually get our version out either tomorrow or Monday at the latest, allowing people at least a week uh, to review the draft before the public hearing. The first thing I want to say about the, the recommendations is uh, the names of all the uh, task force members should be included. And I didn't do that last night, and I, I think we should articulate who all the members of the task force are, and then it is a recommendation of the full committee. Um, so that's my first uh, proposal for a change that you have before you. Um, with that, I, I, um, I sent a copy of the task force recommendations to the municipal attorney, who is Dennis Wheeler, and I sent a copy to Julia Tucker, who is the assembly's uh, legal counsel. I also sent it to the three members of the assembly who are the rules committee, including Mr. Traney, uh, Ms. Uh, Elva Jackson, Elva Gray Jackson, and Ms. Jennifer Johnson. The, uh, the resolution that, uh, that, that created this task force indicated that we would be reporting our findings to the rules committee and that then from there we would be reporting to the Anchorage Assembly. The Rules Committee meeting had been scheduled for October 3rd, uh, which is uh, Thursday and the noon meeting after the public hearing on Tuesday the 1st. Um, and we were, our original schedule is that we would be addressing the Assembly on October 8th at the regular Assembly meeting. That's the schedule we started out with. I don't know if that's the schedule we're going to end up with. Um, we got a note. I got a note to, this morning from Jennifer Johnson saying that she would be out of town on the third oh. and wanted to know if the rules committee would like to meet with us at another time. And so I wrote back to her and said, "Well, you we wouldn't have the. She also will not be back until the seventh. So there's no time before the assembly meeting for us to include. So I looked at next week and uh, said to Ms. Johnson and the other members of the, of the Rules Committee, possibly we could meet on Wednesday or Thursday of next week at noon, but we would not have the benefit of the public hearing to inform our conversation. That's true. So that's all up in the air. 
and I give you that information. Additionally, we received a, um, an email from Jennifer Johnson posing uh, questions for our consideration about uh, the draft and uh, a copy of her email is here. Would anybody like to print a copy? <coughs> <laughs> and her questions are, number one, is the electronic sign-up to be available 24 hours a day up to the close of the public hearing? And number two, is there any way to close the public hearing? It seems that a special interest group could use the public hearing process to filibuster an ordinance by continuing or gaming the sign-up process, uh, which is the note that came from Jennifer Johnson. With that, I, I also um, uh, want to draw your attention to Dennis Wheeler's comments about the draft, and uh, his concern is that we sound like we've provided a legal opinion in the first recommendation regarding uh, the ability of the assembly to close off the hearing, and he had recommended on page three of his um, uh, memo uh, alternative language for the, the first paragraph that talks about the task force recommendation regarding public hearing. So with that, I open the, the uh, meeting and would like to walk through the draft with, uh, and ask any members to put up any issues or concerns or comments on a paragraph by paragraph basis to go through that at this point. Can I ask one thing first? Absolutely. Is Jennifer Johnson able to call in to the rules committee meeting? I do not know. So, I can draw up. Okay. Oh, I have a question. Um, how and when do we want to, if we want to, respond to Mr. Wheeler or consider? Because this looks complicated. Actually, not so complicated. I mean, okay. I, my observation is there's a lot of words, but but the okay. gist of it is that he wants, he wants us to soften the language so that it's a recommendation and an opinion as opposed to something like uh, a legal opinion and fact. And and that his recommendation on page three of three would is his recommendation regarding <clears throat> the paragraph on the bottom of our page one. Is, is what I believe he is recommending. So I'm just, it's for our consideration. Mm -hmm. Jim. Oh, okay. Um, I think the, the way we should handle that particular change, yes, indeed, we're not a legally constituted body. We are recommending. But I think that we should add a sentence after quoting the Bill of Rights that says, and I quote, we consider this provision obligates the assembly to conduct its business only after ensuring maximum public participation, regardless of the complexity, emotion, or level of public participation. Can you tell me where you're reading from? I, I'm reading something I just wrote. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, would you, would, you oh, repeat, would you repeat it, please? All I'm saying I is, if, if we're not allow to find something because apparently that suggests we're a legally constituted duly elected body then I think we need to give our opinion as to what the charter means. Okay. Could you repeat what you mm -hmm. suggested please? We consider this provision obligates the assembly to conduct its business only after ensuring maximum public participation regardless of the complexity, emotion, or level of public participation. I like that. And all I'm trying to say is, Assembly, our interpretation of the Charter is you don't have a choice in that. <laughs> regardless of how tough it is, if people are being profane, etc. Pick your problem with the public. you got to let the public have their say. Sure. Like Mr. Potter, um, uh, Mr. Wheeler, who is the municipal attorney, commented on our draft and suggested that we uh, sound like we were giving a legal interpretation of the charter. And 
Jim is offering language that uh, provides it so that it's our opinion that this is what this means. As opposed to, I, I said the task force finds, and he took umbrage with that notion. Anyway. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, in any of your discussions with the assembly, was there uh, any intent that we would convert our ideas into oh. ordinance language uh, instead of general recommendations, which we have done? Well, first of all, we had no conversations with the assembly. Yes, I, I. Secondly, the conversations we, I had with the rules committee was make recommendations. There was no conversation no. about the language as an ordinance or not. That That's fine. I'm just, in other words, from your understanding, we're carrying out the um, discussion and intent of those members you talk to. Absolutely, and I, okay. think, I think we could probably even go back to the, um, to the resolution that created the body. Do you want a copy of it? And it's in front of me if I can find it. But well, the, I have the gist of which is, um, now, therefore, be resolved that uh, they create uh, the participation of the task force is invited to advise and assist the assembly in its development of procedures governing the assembly's conduct of public hearings open to testimony from members of the public. Uh, the task force is to come to consensus on recommendations to advise and assist the assembly in the development of procedures governing the assembly's conduct of public hearings. Citizens task force recommendations will be presented to the rules committee prior to the presentation to the assembly. Um, that's it. Fine. That's. Thank you. Everything's up to date. Okay. So procedurally, let's start with the. The first paragraph. Can you change the first paragraph on page one? You're just going to add our names, correct? I'm going to say that Citizens Task Force is composed of these people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put that it, it, in the first paragraph. Okay. Or alternatively, I can say, respectfully submitted by all of us, mm -hmm. whichever you want. I like the latter. Okay. Um, what I want to do is just go through um, paragraph by paragraph to say, is this language you like? If this is not language, if you have some proposals for different language, I would like to actually have gone through this document today so that we are in a position to be able to say, this is our draft recommendation, and we would like the public to comment on this recommendation. And, and my goal for the conversation is that we have consensus. Where we don't have consensus, we would actually take a vote. Okay? Any changes to number one? Are we, are we on page one or page number one? Page one, okay. paragraph one, of page okay. one. Okay, paragraph one. It says the Citizens Task Force on the Public Hearing Process. Yes, I just want to make sure that if you could articulate which paragraph as we move around, that would be helpful. Because I don't want to jump ahead. Otherwise, okay. I'll jump ahead. <laughs> Well, you know how I am. Members, the second paragraph said members affirm the following principles. Um, mm -hmm. I have one comment, and I haven't got my language <coughs> together. But I would appreciate a fourth bullet that talks about when you know an action is controversial, working on it in advance of submitting an ordinance is likely to result in a better product, a better record more solid recommendations and less community outrage. That's the wrong word. Less community and more community peace or cooperation or acceptance or acceptance. But I would love it if you would work on some language okay. about that so in a very concise form you yes, can articulate that by the time we're done with you today. Okay. Perfect. Um, Paragraph number three is starts based on the public hearing. Um, we make the following recommendations. Any changes to the that sentence? Okay, number one, charter guarantees for a public hearing. 
I have questions. Yes, ma'am. So in this document, it appears that he takes the issue with the word. That that yeah, yeah. He takes issue with the word guarantee. Does it actually say that in the charter? The word guarantee. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the charter says. The charter says um, I'll read it to you. The charter. This is the Bill of Rights. This charter guarantees rights of the people of Anchorage that are in addition to the rights guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States okay. of America and the Constitution of the State of Alaska. Among the rights guaranteed in this charter are, and then it's number 10, the right to be heard at public hearings prior to the adoption of proposed six-year plans of the school system and the municipality or approval of the annual budget or any ordinance except an emergency ordinance as defined herein. Right. So my comment is, is that the actually the part that I think is the strongest statement in this whole chapter here is actually this first part, which is a direct quotation of the charter. So our version of the language that follows in the subsequent paragraph and his language that follows in the subsequent paragraph are actually not dramatically different. Mm -hmm. We say it's a right. He just wants us to wordsmith us to take out the word fines, to do a couple of other words. But the strongest language that we use is actually straight out of the charter. And the, I, 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 it's kind of hard for me to actually understand what he's getting so exercised about it in the second paragraph. But if it's simply the word fine, I actually think that even if we took out our words and put his words in there and left that top sentence, that whole top sentence there, it's just as strong as our other statement, yeah. it, which is very clear that we find you don't have the right to cut off public testimony. Where are you in his? I haven't read his document. It's, it's, it's the very document. last page. That three of three, 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 the bold paragraph. paragraph in bold. It's his recommendation. The difference is instead of this task force finds, it says the task force recommends, and and where we say the assembly cannot. 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 Yeah. The public hearing cannot be ended by vote of the assembly. He says right. we should say if the assembly runs out of time to hear all people who have come, the task force recommends the hearing be continued. That's what he's just talking to those. The recommend versus the. Right. Yeah. I think it's really important to acknowledge in what he wrote, though, is that the task force recommends the public hearings cannot be ended by a vote of the assembly while people are in front of them. And I think that is fairly substantial language what they're what he's saying is we're saying you can't do what you just did right I, I, and so i think whether Take advantage we advantage of that yeah all of the other language we have in here is kind of getting to the same point which is that you can't do this by a vote while people are waiting to testify I, I therefore your conclusion is therefore our conclusion is i actually don't have any heartburn with what he has here as long as this first the words are there as long as the direct quote from the charter mm -hmm. begins is begins with right to be heard i still want to add jim's i like jim's statement mm -hmm. i really right. want, i want to see that in there that's fine okay yeah. i want to mention that in the uh quoting of the charter where it says dot 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 what i what i left out is prior to the adoption of proposed six-year plans of the school system in the municipality or approval of the annual budget, which is in here, and I could put in there. It just sort of distracted people from or <coughs> any ordinance. It's a red herring. Anyway, it, well, it's not a red herring. It's just, it's, just a, it, it, it's more inclusive. So uh, the question is, should I put That's it in there? Yeah. I, I personally think you should put it in there so that nobody says, well, you're just, you're, it's out of context. It's safer. You're picking I you agree. You want in there. Okay. Quote verbatim. All right. So the notion that we would uh, substitute the language proposed by Dennis Wheeler on page <coughs> three of three for the, for the uh, sentence that reads the task force finds. How do people feel about that? Can you give us a second to double check on Is it is still substantively accurate? I mean, I yes. didn't read his word for word with what you had written, but is that substantively accurate? No. He hasn't changed yes. the intent. No. We're saying you can't do it. He's saying we recommend that you continue the hearing if you run out of time. Okay. Jane? Yes, Bob. It, the issue I have with it is if this language comes down to interpretation, you go to Wheeler's language. Wheeler's going to be the one to interpret it and, 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 and essentially say, well, what they agreed to and what I meant was okay. that this is optional. 
And, 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 and I'm just a little bit nervous. I, I think our language is strong. I think it's consistent with the charter. I'm not really in favor of ch changing it other than I really like what, what Jim had to say. And, and, I, and I like the language he used. I, I, Jim, would you read it one and, more time? And, and, and the point I'm trying to make is, here's the charter. We think the charter is an even stronger obligation on you all since you're signed up. And when you take your oath of office, you're confirming you're going to enforce the charter. The, the quotes that he has, not only are they old, but they also refer to the U.S. Constitution. And, you know, our point is, oh, by the way, you got this charter. And you don't get to avoid the charter with references to Judge Holmes from 1915. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway. Can you read it one more time so I can um, write it down? And it's, it's right after that. We consider this provision means the assembly has a duty to conduct its business only after ensuring maximum public participation, regardless of the complexity, emotion, or level of public participation. And obviously, you guys can work with that too. I just the point is, I'm trying to get us to make an affirmative statement about what the charter oppose, imposes a duty on the assembly. I, I have a question is because I'm not a lawyer. What can you do with the word recommends? We are not. We're not the assembly. So well, recommends is just fine. Fine okay. suggests we're a judge. Right. Okay, Cheryl. I, that's a, and and that's obviously he's he's yeah. trying to tone tone us down a touch and okay. I don't see a difference. Well, I little I had concern about the voice shifting inside the document that you prepared, and uh, I think we've been called on it. Voice shifting. Tell me. I don't well, know. there's some musts and there are some recommends. Yes. And Let me give me a piece of paper. All right. All right I felt that in some cases you were writing language that could go straight into an ordinance. And in other cases, it was couched in language that recommends an action. So I, I wonder if you could please go through the thing and make a consistent voice. I mean, if you want me, I can circle the verbs. Oh, but some things, I think. Uh, some I noticed that the first time I read it, that, that there was inconsistent verbiage or verbs. There were inconsistent verbs that. But one of the things we talked about yesterday when we did this was we said that there were going to be some things that were going to be more sternly and yes. more forefront sure. than there were going to be some more recommendations. So I don't think that the cadence is off because there are things that we're stating in a firm manner, and then there's things that we're stating, well, we're going to recommend this on the side of that. Um, Amanda. I'm so between these two points, it might be beneficial if we clarify throughout the document so you understand when the voice switches that this is a recommendation versus. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe some clarifying. This is our recommendation, or but maybe only once. You need to stand, state that only once, rather than give it to this one paragraph that he wants us to put in. Maybe we can just state it up front. It is stated up front. On um, based on the public hearing, blah blah blah. Task Force offers the following recommendations as consideration of the Anchorage Assembly. It's the third, the second paragraph in the opening statement of the whole document. Maybe you could bold it or underline it if it makes people feel better. <laughs> that we don't think we're in charge. She's got it. Got it. And that's it. We're done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> By that way. Was pretty fast. Andy. The, reducing the arrested in the AO 37 response, a lot of their stuff was about law in Kansas and, and other places, and, and it kind of baffles me because this is about our charter, mm -hmm. Anchorage residents. I, I realize they may not do it this way in Kansas or, as Jim pointed <laughs> out, for the, the Supreme on. Court. But but yeah, this is this is the law we have for Anchorage. And right. I, how they continue to say, well, Phoenix wouldn't do it this way and feel like that's kind of tight. But I know that's not our job to say anything about that, so I'm not suggesting we comment. Okay, thank you. Penny. But I do have a comment on it. We keep quoting Constitution, but our charter says we have 
in addition to rights guaranteed by the Constitution. So we can go over and above what the Constitution Absolutely. gives to us. Absolutely. So what he's saying is sort of irrelevant in that our charter gives us more rights than that. That's, that's the critical issue. He's trying to say the U.S. Constitution right. means you can waffle, but the point is our charter makes it clear to assembly members when they take the oath of office they're obligated to do the charter, right. even if it's more yeah, than the Constitution. Right. You can't do less damage, you can do more than right. I, I So that Wheeler's wrong. I articulate that, that a home rule charter means that the people who live here get to write the structure for the government. They don't, in, in that, and so we, we cannot violate the Constitution of the United States, but we can go, we can exceed the Constitution of the United right. States. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that's a principle of law that we would have forgot. <laughs> so in the, in the, for the purposes of getting this validated today, which is your expressed desire, Jane, which I think is great, should we kind of wrap up our, because I think there's ones, if we are in, going to indulge him at all, then we need to figure out how to do that. Otherwise, I think we should just move the page with the amendment that um, Jim added. We can get that language added later, and we move this one page at a time. Because otherwise, we will be here all day jumping back and forth, right? So uh, I would just ask what, what the body wishes in order to get this product approved today. I would just urge that we do it one page at a time. Because that's what Jane wishes, to approve this entire product today. Right. Oh, I don't think it's that. OK. OK, so. Um, <clears throat> This bottom paragraph called the task force finds, I just need to um, have an understanding of the wish of the body with respect to which words we want to use. I just recommend instead of find. And, and we leave the existing language, Jim? Just change one word? Yeah. And add his sentence to the bottom. Which is? Well, he's going to get it. Okay, later. and the, so the, the Barnett yeah. sentence goes under the charter um, quote, which will be quoted verbatim, not with the dot, dot, dots. And it says, again, just for your information, we consider this provision, meaning the charter, we consider this provision means the assembly has a duty to conduct its business only after maximizing public participation, regardless of the complexity, emotion, or level of public participation. Okay. All right. I move that page as amended. Yeah. I second. And then theoretically, I'll come in with a fourth floor that you can think about it. Mm -hmm. the end of the meeting. Terrific. But we've got a public hearing to review all this, so we, mm -hmm. we've got a, another crack at everything we've written. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, I guess it'll be simple. And all I'm doing is trying to get the, um, the version that's going to go to the public ready right today. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go on to page two. <coughs> Do you want to move each page? No. No? Okay. I want to make any changes that uh, we go along the way. Okay. Okay. Item number two, page two, public notice proposed assembly action. Any changes to paragraph eight? Good. Change to paragraph B. Yes. Paragraph B. Um, a click somehow a click here button to submit public testimony on so which says the municipal website should be revised and be more user friendly for the public. Title of ordinances. I'd also like to see it easier as to how to submit public testimony. Okay, I didn't understand what you want me to do. Um, when you say a click here button, tell me. When, when you go into the municipal website in order to submit public testimony, unless you know you have to go to the clerk's web, the clerk's uh, email to submit, and you submit it directly to your assembly member, it is not public testimony. Your written testimony is not considered to be public document unless it goes through the clerk's email. So I would like to see something on the website that says this is where you need to go to submit your public testimony. Okay, let me just say that, that we're in the notice of public hearings in this paragraph and and in paragraph three 
Oh, I'm sorry. We get I'm we sorry. get to the part where where, where people can submit stuff electronically. Okay, then I'll find it in there. Um, later, but but it doesn't specifically say we want a button that says right. Click here for public testimony. But this is at this section is okay. just on the public notice. I apologize. I read this at four o'clock this morning. <laughs> and, Me too. And Jane, <laughs> and Jane, the three votes. He he's right. It's not for introduction. It's for setting for public hearing. Oh, okay. So, so, you need so that in paragraph C. Three votes needs to come after public hearing on the next line. Process of assembly to include items such as how the consent agenda works, introduction of votes requires three votes. The three votes, according to him, is to set it for public hearing. Anybody can. Anybody can introduce. Mm -hmm. So it should read, introduction of words is comma, uh, um, uh, and then uh, setting an ordinance for public hearing requiring three votes. Thank you very much. See what I mean? Yes. I, I, think, I think he's no, accurate I just, about that. Three votes I, to get I, in public hearing. You got it. No, I get it. Okay. Where are we? <laughs> We're on page two, two item 2C, two okay. the second sentence, which should include <laughs> items such as how the consent agenda works, introduction of ordinances, comma, uh, setting ordinances for public hearing requires three votes. Okay. Um, we're going to delete and after the introduction. I'm going to do, do a, do And I do have a comment on that. Wait, I'm, oh. these are just Sorry. examples of shit that should be there. And, and if it's not right, then right. it doesn't matter. It's, it, it's, it should include items such as the directions for how people are, get in. So right. how the consent agenda works, how ordinances are introduced, and how any citizen can submit a written application for an appearance request on a specific topic. I'm going to delete the whole thing about setting for the agenda in three votes because <laughs> this is this is an example of the kind of instructions that could be on the yes. top of the agenda. And the fact that we don't get it right means maybe the public uh, doesn't. So that's, that kind of proves our point. <laughs> okay, introduction of ordinances. Um, setting ordinances for procuring. Any citizen can submit a written application. Or maybe I should say how an appearance request works. Mm -hmm. Such as? How an appearance request works. Public hearings begin at 6, and audience participation provides an opportunity for a citizen to speak for three minutes on any topic that is. Is the words correct, Amanda? Is that Not correct? under consideration by the assembly? I'm sorry. The I'm last? On, I'm on page 2, Second. item C, the last sentence of item C. I'm just trying to make sure that the word is correct. Audience participation provides an opportunity for a citizen to speak for three minutes on any topic that is not under consideration by the assembly. Is that correct? Yes and no. And I'm sorry, yes this is no. very, this is what happened at the last assembly yes, meeting, like know. the fluoride. And it I is, thought that was a And so I would say that, mess. yeah. Okay. What would you say, Amanda? I, what I'm trying to say is we don't necessarily have to get it right as much as, these are examples of the kinds yeah, of things that should be overstepped again with that. Okay. So, so, or how audience participation works, perhaps. Okay, yeah. audience participation has typically functioned <coughs> as an opportunity to speak on any item not on the agenda. But, and that was what was brought up at the last meeting, and then the body overruled the vote, or the, the chair on that. Okay, and my head's been exploded. So how about on a specific topic, all of this sentence is, is examples of stuff that should be at the top of the agenda that explains things. And we maybe uh, don't have to explain it in this sentence. Right. And so I would say, just more. say audience participation. Yeah. I wouldn't delve into that one because I, I think that that's, it, it might not be true tomorrow. Something okay. that we well, want to do. It's a, yeah, but I, th I think it needs some clarification. That doesn't bother me. All right, but the trouble is, I need to clarify about us. <laughs> the assembly doesn't have agreement on what an audience participation is, so we're not going to fix it here. 
All I'm saying is that the rules for audience participation should be in the agenda. That's This sentence says the citizens should be able to pick up the agenda and go, oh, there's a, such a thing as an appearance request, there's such a thing as audience participation, there's such a thing as a public hearing, and that starts at 6, and uh, I get it, I, in terms of what the rules are. This is just an example of what are the rules. I agree, yeah. You just need to say how it works, not you don't have to list how it works, right? Right, that's the same thing. And I have a, I just have a wordsmithing in the second line of 2C. I'm thinking it should be on the agenda rather than at the top. No, I disagree. Or in the agenda, but not at the top. Why? Because it's going to be a whole page. It's going to be a page. So it should be on the top because it should be the first thing that anybody okay. sees and it should be in the same place really every that, single mm -hmm. time. Okay. If you, if you guys mean that, then that I can live with it. You shouldn't have to look at the back of the back page. Okay. I give up on that one. <laughs> no sweat. Um, I'm moving on to D. Wait, I'm just going to read it out loud the and say it should include items such as how the consent agenda works, introduction of ordinance, setting ordinances for public hearings, how an appearance request for an audience participation works, and public hearings begin at 6 p.m. Yeah. That's what it says. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, moving on to item D. Any changes to item D? Um, just clarification, maybe municipal clerk kiosk should be <coughs> by the public with free access. And they already are computers in the library, so maybe it should just clarify that we think there should be one in the lobby of the assembly chambers. In a locked box. <laughs> okay. Um, well, maybe the uh, word kiosk uh, should be not changed. The municipality should provide the public with free access. Shoot it all it is. The municipality should provide the public with free access to the municipal website in the assembly lobby. Yeah. Okay. Well, is that the only place you want it? I think you want it. Well, it's no. already in the library upstairs because there's already no, they, but, there's uh, already a computer in those locations. I'm just hoping they won't say, okay, we don't need it there, we're, that we're recommending. They just need it. <laughs> I think we want to continue Dangerous. on with When we, you know, where we it originally is. talked about it, we talked about one being available here in City Hall. Mm -hmm. We talked about one being available in the Assembly Chamber. We talked about it being in multiple See, locations. That's the way I read D also. I read D as, as an encouragement to put it in all in public other buildings. Places. Yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on a broad scale. It doesn't demand it. It just says that the, the more public buildings to have this, the better, and, and to be generally available. That's how I read D. And written. I'd like to have it in that broader do we, do we Do we want to specify that there's one in the assembly lobby? Because that's what I think we were, one of the original points was that you should be able to walk out to the assembly lobby and figure this out, which you cannot do right now. I'm just saying a little clarification, <laughs> because it is already in the libraries. We okay. probably want to state it should be in the lobby. I'm not saying that we can't also suggest it for other places. Yeah. Simply. Well, then, in other How words, about add. Municipal kiosks should provide public access with free access to the municipal website in the assembly lobby mm -hmm. and <coughs> other public buildings to provide Perfect. access to people who do not have computers sure. or access to the internet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Assembly chambers lobby. Yeah. Assembly chambers lobby. Just, just to comment on that, the library closes at 9 o'clock. So okay. The assembly may be going until midnight. So. Yeah, but if it's clarified so, that So we're, we're deleting assembly. libraries because it's already there. So it's going to read access to the municipal website in the assembly chamber lobby or other and other public buildings to provide access to people. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Any other changes stronger. to D? Good. Item E. This. I, I want to, to mention. Uh, I was just going to say that this is what Cheryl's talking about the must changes, right? Well, no, I, I'm covered now. I think we got the word recommendations up front. <laughs> Well, here's here uh, the must is really intentional because people don't even know what is on the addendum or what was laid on the table, and there, and although Amanda, God bless her, has already figured out that it's a good thing to apologize, she's instituting recommendation of this task force to make sure that the addendum is in the back of the house and that wasn't there before and the materials are there. 
but, but it was um, addendum issues, laid on the table issues, and then uh, yesterday, I, after we met, I also met with Julia Tucker, who said there's also an issue associated with title only, which means there's a placeholder called the title of the thing. It gets introduced, and they don't even, even have to produce the, the content of the ordinance until a week later. And then oh, wow. they shouldn't do that. They, yeah. that if they're going to put an addendum, a laid on the table, it has to be a, an actual so, document, which is, of course, and it must have public notice. Well, the, the, the addendum is an ordinance that's being introduced, and that then can be set for public notice, which requires 10 days, and this is the beginning of that clock. Okay. I, I know you articulated that the surprise uh, about 37 was that it was on the addendum and you hadn't seen it on the Friday public agenda. Excuse me, you hadn't seen it on the public notice for the meeting which went out the Friday before and you saw it only on, help me, I'm getting my Fridays mixed up. The addendum Friday is three days, the Friday directly before the meeting. The agenda deadline is the Friday, two Fridays before. And okay. so um, I think the, what Jane is trying to clarify, Absolutely. when items are set for introduction on the addendum, they still get the public notice of two weeks. For the, they're, for the public but they're just not on the agenda with all the other items when it first comes out. So it's. They can't, they can't take an issue from an addendum and take action on a deadline. They have to have a two-week public notice hearing process. Okay, so I'm just saying, in this case, <laughs> what is in the addendum and what is laid on the table must be revealed to the public. Mm -hmm. And that's a must, not yeah. a, yeah. if you feel like it. No. Okay? Any other changes to that? Moving on to item F. Any changes to F? The municipal clerk's office now has a Facebook page. And you know Twitter what's really account. funny? My computer, I had a one word and it said it was misspelled. So. No, it, it is actually one word. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Terrific. Do you actually now have a Facebook page? The municipal clerk's office. I'm impressed. Two likes so far. <laughs> Two likes. We're going to change that by the end of this meeting. <laughs> like it right now. <laughs> Item G. Better signage. Oh, yes, please. We're also working on that. So, but it, was, it was Carolyn who said, I can't quite tell what all that stuff is. I need a better sign that tells me this is the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> this is the agenda. Well, here's piles of paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe you flash me neon lights. Good. <laughs> what the planning commission and the planning board and zoning board typically do is that the agenda is in a different colored paper. Oh. So I'm not saying that that makes it any easier, but it's easier because when people are looking at that whole wall of all those receptacles. They going, see a difference. Yeah, that's a really good they, idea. They yeah. I think it should be in screaming yellow. What could you say? Not but the agenda is in a different color. The plan is only commission the agenda is in a different color. That's a, that's a that's good a, idea. Yeah. Especially if it's in something that people can still read the words on. Not, <laughs> not purple. <laughs> like yellow. Okay. Um, item number three, public hearings. Paragraph A. Again, this is this is an example of what the rules are that should be printed on the agenda. Jane? I, yes, Jim. Um, <coughs> am I detecting in 3A, you, you took out the word address, that a person doesn't have to give their address, which oh, right. I think we agreed to yesterday at the little drafting session. But weren't we going to have them say their neighborhood or community? Mm -hmm. Optional. 
<laughs> okay, and what we get to do is decide right now what we're going to do. Um, there was some people who said it should be optional, meaning that the chair could say, please tell us your neighborhood at the same time, or we could just put it in here and, and recommend it. The, the issue was people didn't want to have to give their address for security reasons, for safety reasons, but so then, or what we were talking about is in the case of the civil rights ordinance, people from outside the community were testifying and do, could be residents or taxpayers or what. So what we concluded yesterday was if you said what your neighborhood was or the community that you live in, and uh, should we put that in here? It Jane? is in B. I know. Okay. And, I mean, I, it I'm, is in, where is it? It's in uh, the it's last in 3B. See, again, this this is the items that should be included, but not limited to our examples. Then in B, it says speakers may be asked to identify their neighborhood, community, or residence. Yeah, th I think those are contradictory because you say should, and then you have may. A says should, B says may. But they're both discretionary. I mean, I, I don't see that as particularly conflicting. Speaker requirements to identify themselves. Because really what we're talking about is just some kind of a geographical identifier, whether it was zip code or community council or something that would allow them to feel secure that somebody wasn't going to show up at their household, but still would give the assembly an idea of, of where, where they live. Okay, but let me, let me I, articulate the, the main, oh, the, the assembly, I'm telling, I'm in B, in the first sentence, I'm saying the assembly does have the authority to limit testimony, time. And, and I'm, I'm saying, maybe I should say, does have the authority to limit the amount of time a person is well, allocated. I, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm actually saying they can do that. They can, they can organize it in a manner that makes yeah. sense. So yeah. if, 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 if the may is probably not yeah. correct. So just put the, in can? Put in the word can, Jane. I mean, that's well. I, I like. I like the uh, has the authority. It's. it's I, I want. Heavy duty. What I want to say is, they can do it. We recommend. Maybe what we want to say. Yes. We recommend that there be a three. Maybe we yes. should do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We rec The task force recommends. Mm -hmm that there is a three minute time limit for individuals and a five minute time limit for designated community council, mm -hmm. which is an issue that we discussed yesterday and which we do not have agreement on. So how about if we say the assembly may limit the amount of time or has the authority. What about the task force recommends? Right. Yeah. It, but the assembly has the authority to limit the amount of time the task force recommends. Now, task force, we have a difference of opinion on this. Actually, me not. Oh, I spent Bob, all right. Four hours chewing this over with a bunch of ne'er do wells <laughs> that, that are very active in politics. <laughs> ne'er do wells. And what, what we're talking about in Ms. Goodstein, <laughs> in spurious allegations about the groups are. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, I'm not saying they're inaccurate, I'm just saying they're spurious. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, what, what I was talking about was the idea of allotting organization because I, I have been in forums where, where we've done that. It's been very, very productive. But I've talked to a lot of people that said it's neither the time nor the forum to do that. And, and, and they said it, it, in all likelihood it would create the appearance of, maybe not the fact, but the appearance of. And, and I just think it's something that, that I, I personally would step away from at this point because I think you got a fabulous document and I think it would add value. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, he, so, yesterday he wanted more than five minutes. So yeah. now we've got three minutes for an individual and five minutes for a designated community council representative. Amanda. Um, I move for consideration of the body three minutes for everyone and not the additional five minutes for community councils. Why? Why? Um, some of the things that Bob just discussed of these appearance of they get additional time because they're with an organization and how are we giving this particular organization a different additional time but not other organizations additional time and 
currently at the assembly meetings, I see it function where when a community council president does come up and they are presenting and they are in the middle of their presentation and they do need additional time, it is at the discretion of the chair or other members to allow them to continue speaking. Um, Madam Chair? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go Bob Tim. Okay. I would argue to keep it in. I'll tell you why. Because the charter specifically acknowledges that the value of the community councils is a subgroup to the assembly. And, and, I, and I, think, I think that's explainable in that light. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I love the message of saying there's a real value added to community councils. Uh, I like the message it sends, quite frankly. Uh, so you know, those are two reasons I would really support keeping this in. I also want to just underscore that on page five, there's this paragraph number eight on the community council mm -hmm. collaboration, which underscores the point that Bob just made, which is that the charter recognizes the community councils as a vehicle for the neighborhood. Now we go to Tim and then Joan. Um, I just have to echo everything that was said. That's exactly the point I wanted to make that, that the other groups, whether it's ABT or something else, aren't in the charter. Um, sorry. And uh, the charter specifically tries to reroute and create a connection to the community. And, and you know, uh, I think it's okay to have that. <coughs> okay, Carolyn, Cheryl, and Penny. No, I'm, I'm going to second Tim and Bob. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> um, Cheryl and Penny. I found during Title 21 that Rabbit Creek Council had done a lot of work, um, pages and pages of work. And they were a thorn in the assembly side. And they were not asked to go beyond the three minutes. And that information was pretty much lost in the speed of the, that would have been real beneficial had they had their five minutes. I mean, from my viewpoint, personally. Penny. This isn't actually on the minutes. You know, if we want to, I think you might want to take out the speakers maybe asked to identify their neighborhood or community until I just leave it in A and take it out of B, because it's kind of changing the subject. We're talking about time and we're changing it to, oh, by the way, oh. we already mentioned it in A, so I think we should strike it from B and leave it in A. And it would be, to me, it'd be cleaner. They were saying three minutes or five minutes or whatever we're saying. Yeah. Okay, that's all okay, I'm saying. okay, got enough. I got to this uh, that question. Okay. Let's go back to the question of Amanda's consideration. Yeah. Um, how many people would like to expand, would like to limit everybody to three minutes, period? <laughs> okay, Amanda, God bless you. I'm sorry, but you lose. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you lose. <laughs> All right. My, my, um, the question that Penny poses about speakers may be asked to identify the neighborhood or the community of residence, should we put that in sorry, paragraph A? I like it where it is. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think A makes more sense, honestly, with what Penny's saying because paragraph B, well, in some ways, it, well, I don't know. It's there more a perfect than a May, I think. In A, it's an A. I think it should be an A. But as a should, you guys want people to, sh you want them to identify their I thought community every time. So I think may be asked. Yes. Okay, let's try this and, and maybe ask. Let's mm -hmm. And A, mm -hmm. it says speaker requirements to identify themselves by name and possibly neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Why does that yeah. a description no. of the process? Oh, that could have been bring that up earlier yeah. Yeah. and then end yeah. with the May. Madam Chair. Uh -huh. Yes? On, on this one, I, what, maybe I turn to Amanda to ask a question. When owners of for example, of substantial property here, may be out of town. Do those people come often and testify? And does anything here, identification of neighborhood, are, are we putting out some testimony that should be allowed? I think a person that is a, a substantial property owner is different than a bus full of people coming in from the valley. I'm just wondering how that fits into our discussion. I thought that when we had this conversation at our last meeting, the understanding was that at some point they may also be asked to identify where they're from. I thought that we weren't putting it forward that everybody always has to identify sure. where they're from because I 
don't want to limit testimony from yeah. people outside of Anchorage, and I don't want it to appear that we're making recommendations that perhaps would, I think that we are in a global community. I think Anchorage is the largest city. We are going to have people from out of our geographical area come in that may have feedback. Now, nothing we have said so far creates that limit. Is that not correct? Correct. Well, All we're doing is saying that the assembly may request people to identify yeah. their neighborhood or their community of residence. We, it's not required that they do it. What is required is that the person identify their name. So now we have Tim and then Cheryl. Yeah, I, if we were trying to create a tool that could be used in a situation where it might be helpful that if it's obvious that there's five plus loads of people from Willow, <laughs> not that they wouldn't be recognizable, uh, show up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a Willow property. <laughs> when I'm in Willow, I look like a Willowite. <laughs> well, yeah. How do you pass as a Willowite? <laughs> what year is a Willowite? So, uh, I, I just what think year? it's a tool that the assembly has to use. So that if they, if it's obvious that there's a uh, group of people that are trying to influence something as a special interest, that it, it can become pretty clear that the chair can ask them to identify, you know, where they live, what community they're in, what piece of property they may own within the city. Uh, Should I might have a term? Uh, okay, we have Tim. Then we have Cheryl. Then we have Carolyn. I'm good to go. I just wanted to ask Tim a question. Should there be a, you need to have some sort of stake? Instead, like, can you come and testify if you live in Colorado and you're just here visiting? Absolutely. We might learn something. <laughs> <laughs> just check. Okay, so what, what it's going to, how paragraph 3A is going to read is, Included but are not limited to time limits, opportunities for submittal of electronic testimony, time limit for speakers, speak for requirements to identify themselves by name and possibly neighborhood and community, and a description of the process for continuation of public hearings. Again, the purpose of A is they, I want somebody other than us to think about what the rules are that should be described so that people who come to the community come to that meeting and have a clue what's going to happen. Then we're going to, on, on paragraph B, reads the assembly has the authority to limit the amount of time a person is allowed to testify. This task force recommends there's a three minute time limit for individual speakers and a five minute time limit for designated representatives and community councils, period. Period. And then the that, that speakers may, that is gone. <coughs> on to paragraph C. Any proposed changes? Uh, yeah, I have one. Sure. Um, if a person is not, last sentence in the paragraph, if a person is not available when called, they do not forfeit their chance to be heard and can still testify at the end of the hearing. I would strike, uh, can still testify uh, and say, well, excuse me, and can sign up again on the I, I sign think up what, sheet. I think what we were trying to do with this was that it couldn't be created that there'd be a situation that because you weren't signed up on the list, but you were there, there was still time left. So that when the assembly gets to the last name on the list, they need to ask, is there anyone else? Yeah. Oh, that's a different I issue. That's a, I, I believe that's a separate issue than what I'm trying to address. Because in my opinion, this last sentence tells that person they have to go to the very back of the line. And I'm saying they can jump back in. Wait, and then wait. the okay. fact what you've raised, I think, is the second issue, and I agree that that's what we were trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting because that's this is Carolyn's concept, and your interpretation is different than hers. So this is interesting. What was your notion about if they weren't there when their name was called, then what happens? To them? Then they are free to they can go sign right sign back up if they're using a sign up sheet. They can put their name back on the list. If, as far as I'm concerned, they can just stand in the queue and queue in. I, I don't have an issue with that. They already signed up. If they're not there, if their name has already been called 
and they missed it, they can just stand in the queue and queue in because honestly, the amount of people that are going to do that is minuscule. I in think reality. But what you're trying to say is, if you're not there, that doesn't mean you can't testify. Exactly. You just get sign up again, get back in queue, but you can't be not denied the right to testify because when you were called, you weren't present. That's well, I think exactly maybe what, what you just say. say, if a person is not available when called, they do not forfeit their chance to be heard, period. period. Yeah, I think that's Okay, perfect. good idea, good idea, thinking. great. I, I, if, um, I like what Tim brought up about, it might be nice if we mentioned that whenever a public hearing is about to be closed, it is current practice yeah. that the chair says, is there anyone else to testify, anyone at all? And then closes the public hearing. So maybe we might want to also include that in our recommendations, yeah. even though it is a, 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 a practice already, but just that we support what that. What would like you that. add? The chair currently says, is there anyone else to testify, anyone at all? Prior to closing public hearing, the chair will. And, and I, I like that. I think yeah. it's clear. It's easy to. It's current practice. Yeah. Okay. And I'll we'll see times. An, another item. The chair will ask, is there anybody else would like to? Through the chair. To me. <laughs> um, on item C, where uh, it says that it must be managed by the municipality to ensure fairness. Yes. Who is the municipality in that context? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have no idea. And the reason, <laughs> I mean, Could it I, just can't be, in this case, the clerk's office. What happens is the, the, the unions were told that the assembly would not manage the list. So they did it. And we also had testimony from a young woman who said that somebody who was managing right. the list under civil rights told her she couldn't testify because she was too young. Right. I don't know the answer to that question. Do so you want the clerk's office? I, I think in the context of the municipality, you know, we could say it's the mayor, it's the city manager, but I'd much rather have it be the clerk's office. And if we're going to say who that's going to be, so that everybody doesn't go like this at the public meeting. Got it. That would be the clerk's okay, office. Okay, all those in favor of the clerk's office. Here, here. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the other reason we have to Must be managed by the municipal clerk's office. We, we just, somewhere in here, the citizens have a right to ask for a... It's the next thing. Oh, it's the next thing. Okay, I apologize. And you've got two oh, there is. Got it. Never mind. It's a really big item, Jane. You have two periods after the word the meeting. <laughs> uh, uh, Where? In the very middle of the... What? What? Give me a letter. People should be able to C. sign... C. Yeah. We're still on C. Oh, yeah. It's bad. And you should be able to sign electronically or in person for me. You want one of those periods to go away. <laughs> and also the meeting. And the meeting. Okay. Or add three and, and say there was something there we wanted to include. I want you to know that this is not my forte. <laughs> I've been doing beautiful. You do it so well. Yeah. But we have nitpickers here. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Okay. Anything else about paragraph C? The last sentence is prior to the close of the public hearing, the chair will ask, would anyone else like to testify? Well, uh, uh, um, I would like to see that as standalone, I think. This has to do with the sign-up sheet. Okay. I like that. I think it's a good point. Um, I don't know. It so maybe want. it goes, maybe it's E. Maybe it becomes a new E. Because then we're, what, the mm -hmm. It's the conduct of the hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, so what we have is then item D, standalone Joel Hall Thank memorial you. statement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a good one. We'll see what they have to say about that. It's pretty daunting when they say no. And you're like, oh my God. There's going to be so many yeah. people there. They what did ask do? for a sign-in sheet, and they were told no. Mm. Crazy. 
Well, for the, for the order, labor can we demonstrate? No. Yes, Andy. I would say the way this is worded seems to mandate that one or the other will happen. And it may be that the Marsden is simply not available. I'm I sorry. Know, that Are we on D still? I'm he's sorry, quite a G. We're in D. He's, he's dropping. We're in D. I'm sorry. Okay. Any suggestions about. Okay, moving on to what is E. Go for it, Andy. And I have one. You were he's, in G. He was talking about G. All the way down to G. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on the, the paragraph called yeah. E if the assembly runs out of time. Anybody want anything to say about that? Cheryl. I would like to know, can you guys imagine taking these sign-ups electronically? Have you, can you, you know, we have, that's going to work? Nothing currently that would be, we would have to create something from scratch. Yeah. I'm just, I was just curious. I think it's going to be a hassle, but I, I that's the way we're headed, right? Is it, is it reasonable it might, to ask you to go there? Yeah, I think it might be a nice place to get to, but thinking about it a little bit more, we're probably going to be have to be pretty specific about a cutoff time okay. for electronic sign-up because people would be claiming that they signed up electronically at the moment before the hearing gets closed, mm -hmm. and then it gets closed, and then we have a problem. Well, okay. Bro, let's let's discuss this. Then um, we've got Carolyn and then Bobby. My statement to Tim's is the fact that you can sign up whenever you want. If your little butt is not in that room when that hearing closes, oh well. Whether you signed oh, up that's a good point. or not, yeah. that's, that's already, already, that's that's already, already in that room, isn't it? Okay, no, then that goes back to anybody, anybody at all. I, I would have Bob. deferred to Amanda. I think some of this stuff too can be considered as recommendations and then the, the clerk's office and when we go out to bid, we can be, we can work on the logistics of it and work out the details. And work out the details. But I, I mean I think it can go forward as a suggestion. Okay, let, let's Jane be and, and essentially what I would add is, is if we're gonna put this together, let let's put put language in it to say received by the clerk's office. To, to, to not just have it out there, to have somebody come in and say, I signed up on a computer in Willow with Tim, and, and uh, yeah. uh, to, but, but putting in language to say, you can sign up electronically, but it must be received by the clerk's office. That way, if there's problems with the internet and all the rest of it, we're not embracing that. We're just saying it has to be received by so that it's workable. Even if you have the received bot, I mean, you can stick that in there, but the bottom line is going to come down to when that hearing closes, it doesn't matter what you have to do. I understood it. I process it. Okay. That's so, so actually, let me, let, let's just explore this for a second. Because we don't have a process for signing up electronically, do you think we should recommend, the task force recommends that the clerk's office explore there you go. Yes. Methods for signing up electronically. That's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. I do too. And so, Jane, right. if I might add, so you suggest pulling it out of the individual pieces where it appears kind of disembodied and have a single point saying as a tool to encourage public involvement and to facilitate the list process, we highly recommend that the clerk's office investigate an electronic sign up mechanism and maybe re-engage with the public task force? <laughs> no! Oh, no. <laughs> Period! No, Ready. Oh. Well, you're really good, right? <laughs> you know, Not I'm if right. he wasn't. <laughs> the the Take a breath, take a breath. If the anyway. goal of electronic <laughs> sign-up was to give people some idea of when they might speak. And so it's something that happens in the midst of a lot of people speaking. But like you say, at the end, if nobody's in the room, you know, the, the chair doesn't have to go down and call that list or, or anything like that. It's just that if there are 200 people in the room and 100 signed up three days ago and, and other people just showed up or something, my understanding is the goal is for those people that signed up well in advance, they kind of get some kind of ballpark idea of when they might talk. It helps them schedule on, on these and, and yeah, I, I prefer we leave it fuzzy, but that's the only real benefit to signing up online. Well, you have an anticipation of how long the hearing will be continuing. Yeah. How many and, hours? And there's no way to, to know that except that if you 
signed up, you're number two on the list. You signed up days before the first you should have a one. You need to be you're the probably going to be called during the first public hearing or the first full afternoon of public hearings. Mm -hmm. But at some point, when you're when you're approaching the end and there's no one left to speak, the list doesn't matter anymore. But okay. it must matter sometime. All right. So, what what if we say um, the sign-up sheet has been instituted and continues to be available to anyone who seeks to testify as long as the hearing continues? Delete that people may sign up in electronically. Um, add a sentence that says uh, the task force suggests the uh, assembly explore a process for signing up electronically. Can I throw out something while your break? Yes. Um, what about if you've exceeded the time for testimony on the first night, you've instituted a sign up sheet, then it becomes an electronic sign up sheet ahead of time? Then after that, it becomes electronic sign-up ability. I, or not? Oh, it may. It might be that in their exploration, that's what they figure out. Right, okay. But but I don't know that we know that now. Right. Okay. I, I want to ask a question about um, the first sentence where it says, "If the assembly runs out of time, oh, come testify. The assembly must continue the public mm -hmm. hearing." The the most important must in the sentence is not continue the public hearing because they do that it's they have to set a date and a time so people have some predictability so so what i what i'm suggesting is that the assembly will continue the public hearing instead of must okay and put the must they must identify when it's going to happen because people leave the assembly and they don't know when it's going to happen they just know that they said we're going to continue, but they don't know when. So, you what I suggest is that we delete the must, the assembly must continue, and just say the assembly will continue. And it then the must, must, which is a much stronger word, yeah. goes with the find the date. Do you want a time or just the date? Oh, no, not time. Well, this is just good manners. Oh, good I, 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 may, <laughs> I, may, may we ask Amanda how often they <laughs> do not set a, a date? I, I have the impression that sometimes it's just very difficult for them to figure out a date that particular night. But I don't know. I don't have got the track record. I don't have the track record. I cannot think of a specific example off the top of my head where they did not okay. set a, a future specific date. date that something would be. Yeah, with AO 37, we came in the first night of public hearing then we knew right away we were going to have, I think it was like a Tuesday, Wednesday, or a Wednesday, Thursday. They announced it that night that we would continue the public hearing Wednesday, potentially Thursday. They just didn't, I think that they always say when the next one, but they just don't say how many, there which is maybe where some of the confusion came in with AO 37. They always said it's going to be continued to this next night, but not this next night, this next night, and this next night. So you right. could plan for the next time but not the all the times time. yeah and, and that's where something like a sign-up sheet facilitates the notion that you would need more than one date okay but I don't think we can ask them to know all of that the, oh no I totally agree with you that it's it's hard because the building is used for other things okay so it now reads if the assembly runs out of time to hear all who can testify the assembly will continue the public hearing and must identify the date of the continued hearing at a date as expeditiously as possible. The sign up sheet is instituted, it goes on as long as the hearing. You don't need the date twice. You must identify the continued hearing at a date, at a future date. What? You've got date twice, we don't need it. I'll let you worry about that later. All right. <clears throat> Okay, and then we're going to delete. People may sign up electronically. Replace it with explore that, and then the hearings may be set for Saturdays. Is Carolyn's idea where she wanted to mandate they have to meet Saturday, and Eight we're hours. saying that <laughs> lo and behold, Saturdays are possibilities. Okay, and um, can I clarify? Um, yeah. Go backwards, please, up into C. We cut off a sentence, if a person is not available when called, they do not forfeit their chance to be heard. Period. I'm, 
period, I'm thinking of adding the phrase, as long as the hearing continues. Oh. Yeah. I'll let you think about that. Well. No, that's true. I mean, if they're not there and the hearing gets closed, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Can you say that again? To add the phrase to the end of that sentence, as long as the hearing continues. That's, that's logical. Yeah, okay. it's, just, it's just making it's it clear. Or okay. Moving right along, we are now on um, F. F. Possible, if possible, the title of the ordinances. See, I don't know how they, maybe, if possible, they should write it on the bottom of the TV screen. Item G, if the assembly anticipates public hearing, they, they can try and find another place. Mm -hmm. Even though I know in the ordinance it says they shall meet in the assembly hall, they have the authority to move to someplace else. And if, if it's possible, do we want to say if possible it will? Because if it's not possible, that gives them an escape. I mean, why would we have two qualifiers in there? If, if possible allows them, if it's not possible, they don't have to do it. If it is possible, they should be mandated to do it, is, is what I would encourage us to say. I think there's a lot of logistics that go on with moving the meeting, and it's not just so widely noticed. There's, um, you know, the stuff we show. use to record it, the all that, the system we use to run the meetings. I, I, I think it, we should have it as a suggestion, but I think it works well as a suggestion because okay. it is a logistical nightmare. Okay, and, so it's an issue of practicality I, more than possibility. Yeah, that and I okay. understand the reason for doing it to allow as many people to attend, but there is a lot that goes on to having an assembly meeting. No problem. So we've done with that. Okay, um, moving on to item four, substitute version of ordinances. Yeah. Well, I was to me, the way G reads, it says that if they think that it's going to draw more than the assembly chamber is going to accommodate, they either have to rent the, the Marston or move to a larger space. And I, I don't know that we really want to say that. I mean, they're, those are off. They should consider sure. renting the Marston or moving to a larger public space. I but, even can. But if they think that it's going to be larger than the assembly chambers, I don't think we should say they have to. Right. We should consider. Yeah. I agree. No. Okay. So uh, maybe it says they can, if it's the assembly anticipates that public hearing will draw more people than the chambers can accommodate. The task force recommends they consider either using the Marston Theater to be set up or move the meeting. So you just want me to add. We recommend they consider. Mm -hmm. Okay? You add what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. The task force recommends they consider either the, the use of either the Marston no, Theater or mm -hmm. move the meeting. That's all. Okay, item four substitute versions. Paragraph A. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the lawyer. Okay, item B. By the way, by the way, I just wanted to add. add um, well, I. Go ahead. Sorry. I did have a conversation with Julia Tucker, who is the assembly council, and she said, if the purpose of a public hearing process is to inform the thinking of the assembly, it is logical to assume that the ordinance before them will morph in relation to the yes. comments that they hear, that it will change and be enhanced and be improved. And so, in her mind, S versions are cleaner than handwritten amendments from the floor. <laughs> and that people go, oh, okay, now I see what it's morphed into. And I'm just saying that it was a point of view that I hadn't considered before. So that S's are not necessarily are always evil. Negative. They are the process of the evolution of the development of law. Sure. At what point does it become some, and she said, when it becomes the opposite of what it was intended to become, 
then you've got a challenge. But who is the judge of that is the question. Right. But it was just an interesting point of view. Okay, yeah, that's that's right. Right. Yeah, I'm so sure. Yes, Amanda. I, having been the minutes clerk for the assembly, recognize how the S version can be cleaner than on the floor amendments. I think one conversation that this group has had is <clears throat> just how is the public part of the conversation when these new S versions keep coming out, and so, and and making sure that there's sufficient notice and opportunity for the public to address changes might be things that we could consider discussing. So let me ask, an S version is introduced. Is the S version in the back of the room? Not always. No. This is changes Not that the clerk's always. office through these conversations is working on. But sometimes it's hard because it doesn't always. So maybe what we should do is on the, table the task force recommends that any S version being presented to the body be available to Public. I mean, something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. I like that language. It's mm -hmm. real important. That's so straightforward. That's great. Mm -hmm. it, it will also reduce the number of S versions, I would think, because sometimes it feels like there are three or four, and they're just yeah. dancing around. Okay, and Um, cooperation of the available for the public at the back of the house and, or on with the other floor. agenda documents. Okay. Yes, ma'am. If I remember right, on the US versions, you know, when, in the Alaska legislature, when you're amending a document, it's very clear what's been taken in, what's been added, and what's been deleted through a use of brackets and font changes. Is there? Can we recommend something like that with these S versions? Because how they come out whole, and you don't know really what's been taken out. Which is why, by the way, you've got both versions for Right. So I think that's what we're trying to sh say in A, right? Track changes? Yeah. It's kind of like track changes. If I can jump in, Dick Trainey, it sounded like, considers himself the master of S versions. And he uh, considers uh, it a cleaning up process. You know, and he'll improve on the original language. Right. Um, so I can imagine him doing an S version with some explanation. I cleaned it up and it's a lot better. But I can't imagine doing the brackets. So I see Joelle's point of this was the original document introduced. This is AO 2013-100. And then we've gone 100S, 100S1, 100S2. You should be able to see on 100S2 what the original 100 looked like. Even though I work for the assembly, I can't think now if they track it throughout the changes. And I don't know if you have familiarity with the changes that happened with the 37, if they did. But that I can see how that would be valuable information to have the document have all the changes as it's going forward. I just, I don't know why I can't think of that already does that or not. So. I don't think that it does, because um, I remember in the S1 or the S2 version, you know, there was a, there was deletion of police and fire from the managed competition requirement. I mean, so you have huge sections of the people who work for the municipality now no longer subject to this, but it came in as a result of public testimony. It was on the S1 or the S2 version, but you know, we're pouring through this bit by bit because you can't really tell what's in, what's out, and what they've changed. And so just, it's relatively easy to do. They do it in Juno all the time. It's a simple, separate bracketing the things that are gone and bolding the things that are added. And you just have a living document that has, even though it looks the, the, you know, it also helps for people to understand when things have been substantially changed and when a new, when more testimony is in order. Because I think that's the other thing is if you have an S2 that is totally separate and not even on the same table from the S version, if you're in the public, you can't say, well, wait a minute, they just changed all of this stuff and they're not going to let me talk again. You have to have all three versions, do your shuffling in the, in the audience. So I just, I think that if that's what I, when I read S, that's what I think, that's what I would like to see, is a singular, the, the documents are not new with no reference to what it used to be. Okay, and I, and I, I just, I'm just going to comment that I, yes, Cheryl, I heard Cheryl say, Sometimes the S version is an amalgamation of a lot of stuff that is not 
it's like whole new paragraphs are added. And, and I'm just saying, logistically, you've got a challenge there. Logistics, is, and, I would and agree, so of course, and that's what I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Logistics. <laughs> <laughs> the comment is and also federal regulations do that all the time. You have regulations, yes. regulations and every time you see a federal regulation and they have a hearing, they go through regulations and they show you what they were going to do and they show you what the changes are and it's really simple. Okay. I mean, I don't see why it, it shouldn't be that difficult. They should know what their changes are. So. Okay. I think it's important. I think it's really important. Sure. There are differences between, uh, I never read or, oh, 37, I'll be frank, and I can understand why you would argue for that, and I think it's legitimate. Th those, that needs to be bracketed. But the stuff that I've been working on most recently, was it 63? I forget these numbers. On um, the public hearing process, it was just a schmush, and, it, and to, it was bad enough trying to read it without brackets. And to add brackets to it would have just made it worse. It was such a mess. Um, I guess what I'm arguing is, difficulty aside, um, a complete representation of the tra of the morphing of a document from yeah. A to B to C is the least the public deserves. We can find a way to articulate it in a way that is, it is difficult, but if you've read legislation mm -hmm. coming out of Juno, no, I understand what you're saying, and yeah. I agree, yeah. especially in something that's technical, as technical as uh -huh. 37. I've been saying with some other issues, and also the way we handled it that night, and it took hours, was to have them side by side. There were three S's, and we well, that's just my sat there and then marked it. Right. And then they okay. have to move. They, you don't have all three S's in one paper. You have one to two, two to three. Because well, they have to be adopted. You can't have three S's on the table. That's my, that should be one of the points here. You shouldn't get to have three S's in one night. One you should have one S that is either voted up or down. Moving to the second S, which is my second, you know, my second point I guess I should make. I think we should probably discuss this with some sympathetic assembly members before we get too far down this track. Okay, I'm let's, not sure they let's would be just receptive. say um, for for purposes of getting through this, let's just say uh, S versions have to be available. In, in paragraph A, we say it has to show what has been changed from the original version. B, B they have to be available. Uh, and then finally, if the changes are so substantial that there's a new public hearing, we do not even purport to describe how anybody would figure that out. I had one question about this, and I just ask the opinion of the group here on C. If the changes are so substantial that it significantly changes the original proposal through S versions or amendments, that's what I would propose we add, the new version should be considered a new document. Because they, this is the hole that they could climb through, right? You, you, oh, well, we didn't S version. We didn't change it through S versions. We changed it through amendments. And all we're doing is we're suggesting that if you change it substantially, you might want to think about letting the public comment on it. We're not saying you have to. We're just saying that sh thought should cross your mind. Okay. That we should get to comment together. Right. As long as it's uh, not mandatory. We're not we're recommending We're just saying the new version. I mean, you know, we just amended it with my little piece of paper. Should be considered. I mean, there's some amendments that just happen that, you know, yeah. you're not going to have a chance to start over. Absolutely. I just don't want to cut off one thing and then they come pouring through the other side. My issue is, if you can change something substantially, the way, the way they treat you right now is if you have ever testified on any S version, yeah. they don't want to ever hear from you again, no okay. matter how difficult it is, how changed it is. So, any other proposals on Well, forward? no, I was just trying to clarify, Joel. So under C, you're suggesting you put, if the changes through S versions or, or amendments. amendments are so substantial right. in the language that's saying mm -hmm. significantly changed. I would in other words, you, that. you can't no. take a bicycle bill and put pro or you know I get the pro concept. choice in there yeah. or whatever. The language is acceptable to me. That's I like it. Okay. Okay. I, I just want to mention that, that they they are governed by the title one title. Yeah, so they can't yeah. they can't go from bicycles to birth control. Can you say Tim I just want to make sure everybody around this table recognizes that if the S language stuff is so difficult for them, they will regress back to doing it the old-fashioned sausage making way, <laughs> and that's not pretty. Uh, and and also, you often don't get a chance to even comment on those amendments because it's after they've closed public hearing and they're amending right. away. Um, 
so I, I agree that with Joel that it's it's easy. It's either either it's most of the assembly people aren't writing their own best versions. Oh, they're not. <clears throat> they may come up with the language, but they give it to okay. either the clerk's office or the municipal attorney's office, okay. and it gets cranked out. And so, you know, whether training knows how to use Tracker or not, um, somebody's going to. Good. And it does make it much easier to see. Oh, well, I'm not upset about this now. I understand what it is. Thank you. But if yeah. you make it too hard, the way around it is to just go back and do it the old fashioned way. I, I, I do have the notion that I don't have I don't know what actually got adopted in Title Twenty One. And I, I tried to find out. So I'm just saying that as a pedestrian in that process, I'm not even sure that they knew. It's okay. I, I don't know. I think half of the commission members or more than half okay. don't really know either. Yeah. Okay, Jane. Yes, I'd like to accommodate uh, Joel's concern about back changes and use for desirable, perhaps. Have some other modifiers, really complicated, really heavy duty stuff. It'd be really great to have crack changes. At least mention it. Okay. But I agree that if we mandate crack changes, we maybe have to correct the uh, paddle. Okay, I'll I'll put it in as it's. Uh, it, does that. Does that suit you guys? I, I think it's I think it's fine. I, I you know I don't have a problem either way. Either that it be looked at and evaluated if it's okay. a big issue. But I think they could do it now. And it's not a big deal. Okay. Um, moving along to uh, page four, paragraph five, continuation of public hearing. Any comments about A, any comments about B? Do now that we've moved electronically off to like a side note, oh, do we want to make reference to uh make comment in writing? And um, oh, oh no, never mind. Different kind of electronic. I'm yeah, sorry. I got you it. can submit yeah. your comments. I got it now. Yeah. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is something written somewhere. I read it. I don't remember where. <laughs> That's a broad yeah. scope. I know it's really broad. Isn't it? um, saying that public records will be kept for five years. Oh, Amanda. And is that true? Then uh, my question is: With today's technology, does do we really have to have a time limit on it? There's a retention schedule, and I. I'm not sure if this is, I mean. That's not charter. It's not charter, and um, I think that the conversation about technology is separate from the conversation about documents, because. Paper. They scan it, and they scan it before they show it. So, so our, I think it's the IRS. <laughs> but permanent <laughs> files are not electronic. If you're looking at permanent files, if you're having oh. a conversation about permit files, you're talking about this electronic really? stuff. You always need another source to access it. So if, and that is a whole huge conversation. Wow. That, and I didn't know that. So, are you saying that you want them to no. keep all these little papers no. forever? I just think no, that just, it is a whole huge no, conversation, just, kind of outside of this task force. Right. No, my thought was if they could be kept as a little megabyte, kilobyte something somewhere that you can access electronically. We're not going to go there tonight. Time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just... It is way more the public. The, the, the intention of the, of the public record proposal is that everyone gets to see all of the stuff that has come into the clerk's office that's distributed to the assembly and that the public gets to see it as well. That's what the purpose of this you know, paragraph is. Yeah, yeah. I think that is just darn swell. And I, and I changed <laughs> it so that all the emails received and distributed to assembly <coughs> members as opposed to all the personal emails that the assembly gets because of yes. this conversation. So if, if the clerk gets it as a public comment, then it's available on the website. As Are we on part six of the now? Did you move to six? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Well, we Any conversation we... about 6A? Yes. Cheryl. I, I would uh, urge us to consider dropping the word considered in the last sentence of 6A. 
So no the anonymous. Submittal must be identified by the name of the submitter. No anonymous submittals will be considered or posted. Will be posted. What? No anonymous submittals will be posted. Why, why drop the consent? It's just extraneous. It's just okay. an unneeded. I agree with that. Yeah. You can't control what people consider they don't. Um, on the first line where it says resolution should include an audio, could we in between there, comma, at a minimum, comma, oh, and audio? Oh, yeah, good point, because it's uh, visual right now, yeah, it, visual and audio. There's video, and there may be pieces of things in here that we haven't included. So. And I sort of already think that we do this. Do you think what? We already have uh, audio only agenda that is has the documents attached to it yeah that has I mean that is all available on the website it's just to make sure somebody in the future doesn't I uh, no 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 actually I I'm I'm hearing you but I, I thought that one thing we did add is that if you get emails or other documents that go to assembly members that the public gets to see them also, which doesn't happen today. My only yes. proposal then would be to split it into two separate things and maybe clarify that we like this and that we should keep doing this and that the second part is, and you should also do this. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so maybe do we that. not, the, what the notion was that there is a public record, and I know you're saying, yes, there already is a public record. We don't need to say anything about that. Maybe what we say, in addition to the public record that already exists, we recommend if materials are distributed by the clerk to assembly members that that is also available to the public. I absolutely like everything you I like, said. I like it. So do I. Okay. All right. Then, uh, I could probably. Mandy and I can work on what is already given under law and just add the thing that says the stuff that the clerk passes out to the assembly members right. is also available for public. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, paragraph B. Yeah. Mm, we could put some words. Yeah. yeah. We talked about it in another place. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We did. So should we delete it from here? Well, this part says something different. It's talking about how they public can access record. the public record yeah. reference so above. Bad too. All right. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Our brilliant stance. Yeah. Paragraph seven. <laughs> Meeting room of the assembly. A reader board. I do have a, a, a question on one, two, three, four, fifth line down. Any issues that have been postponed, all items that have been adopted, and I was thinking that might want to read acted upon, because some of them may have been rejected rather than adopted. I want to like okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Paragraph B. Right? What is wrong with the acoustics? What can they do? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea, but I think they should look at it. Yeah, quite often in that room. Mm. The, everything's set up for the assembly, so I guess it's not so bad. But there are times where, um, especially if there's new people that are going there, you can't tell because who's of the way speaking? the audio, the acoustics play in that room. Right? When you're there, you can't tell who's talking. Oh. You know, I have an advantage of knowing everybody's voice, so I yeah. know who's speaking. But every, all you'll see all the time um, over here. I'm asking, the, and then the assembly person will kind of raise their hand, mm -hmm. uh, and the person doesn't know who they're supposed to be addressing mm. or nothing. So there's no light cue that when the, an assembly person speaks that says they're the one that's speaking. And that oh. round room really does play havoc with the quality of sound. So when, ah. you're, when you're sitting in the audience, you can't always necessarily hear. I usually sit down the front and I haven't had it. Something up front, sometimes someone way in the back can hear. And you know, this is something that is being looked at. It's a big 
yeah, money issue. Because it, it, it really that. is a, a problem. If you want to hear good, go stand up against the back wall. Yeah. Then you can huh. hear everything. Wow. Yeah. Back to the wall. Even the whispers <laughs> of the assembly. <laughs> sure. right. Okay. Sometimes that's a good position. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Paragraph number eight. Any changes to community council collaboration cheerfully executed it. for the for good cause? Darn swell, it's my name. No, I really like it. <laughs> Paragraph 9, Assembly Presence at Public Hearings. Paragraph 8, yes? Um, I'm thinking that, and Amanda, you can clarify if I'm right or wrong, or um, that before the meeting starts on line 2 should be worded more like when the public hearing section of the meeting begins. Because it's the meeting started. Yes, because the meeting started 9 a. The meeting started at 3 or 4 a.m. Did uh, p.m. Didn't it? It started earlier in the afternoon. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I I know that they typically try and do a dinner break after the consent agenda and before public hearing starts, so that they don't interrupt anyone in the middle of public hearing. It's typically the way that they do it. What, what, what time generally? The assembly seems to start to be generally at 5 or 5.30? 5. Yeah. And, and I guess the thing here to me is, is I like to say, think about having a late lunch or an early dinner. I mean, <laughs> seriously, we're talking two days a month. I haven't seen anybody emaciated on the assembly, nor am I. And the fact that, that they could they could take a, a late lunch or an early dinner and, and then the flow of business to go forward. If they need a health and welfare break, great. But it just, to me, sends a lousy message. And, and uh, right now, come in. I'm just going to make a comment. Um, things to consider, the assembly members, yes. There's also all the staff that is at the meeting. When I go to meetings, I get to work 8 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning. I work a full day. I don't always take a lunch. And and yes, it is. We go that. eat dinner. And it's nice because Sometimes I'm there till 11 or midnight, and so that where is, do you go? We just eat it in the back during dinner break. So I understand the public's frustration with this. I don't always think it's exclusively about the members. It is also about all the staff that's required to attend the meeting from all the departments. So and I, and right now the public hearings are supposed to start at six. Yeah. Well, so they can't, they can't start any earlier than six. Yeah. Yes. Set in the code that they, they start at six. have to start at six. Okay, so and that's the deal. They in, in practice, what happens is they break at usually 10 to 6 or something like that. Six? No, after the consent agenda. I, they start at five. It doesn't function the same way at every single meeting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is a really quick consent agenda and they are able to break at you know, 5.15, 5.30. Sometimes it is a consent agenda with hotly contested items that they spend a lot of time discussing and they don't break until maybe 7, 7.30. I think something to consider is maybe suggesting a time limitation to encourage the members yeah. to take no more than a 15 or 20 minute break. I'm, I'm just, it's a... Because it really feels good. I think that it is not only about the members and I think that but I'm just things to consider maybe you didn't think about okay so uh, all I'm trying to do is figure out what's a, what is we want to say is is because what I heard was people thought it was rude that they came for a public hearing and then everybody got up and left for a half hour yeah so is that what happens well on the agenda it says kind of in fine print that the public hearings will not start any sooner than 6 o'clock. So that lets everybody know supposedly that they don't have to rush there to get there by 5.50. You know, they don't, public hearings will not start until after 6 o'clock. Yes, but also but we are told by the clerk's office, you should be there at 6. And, and well, can't that, finish. And you should. But I think a lot of people, you know, so all of a sudden the consent agenda runs past 6 o'clock. The public has this image that it says on the agenda the that, the, that they're supposed to start at 6 o'clock. It actually says they won't start before 6 o'clock. So 
so I think there's a, a lack of understanding that, you know, God, I got there at 6 o'clock, then they take their damn dinner meet, uh, time, they say they're going to be back in 15 minutes, they take a half an hour, you know, they're, you know, they're killing me. And that's, right. that's where the problem is. I think that if everybody knew that the public hearings started at a certain time, and it's when the consent agenda is done, and it may not be 6 o'clock, but you don't have to be there until 6 o'clock if you're going to testify in a public hearing. And then if the assembly would, instead of saying we're going to take a 10 or 15 minute dinner break and take a half an hour, if they say 10 or 15 minutes, then they ought to do it in 10 or 15 minutes. The expectation is set up, and when they don't meet the expectation that they stated, it's a problem. Okay. Carol, it's your own. Is there any reason that they can that a dinner break cannot be scheduled from 5:40 to 6, whether the consent agenda wow. is done or not, or anything else? You stop, you eat, you go back to work. I mean, is that an option, or am I crazy? They, they could control. establish an absolute time, just like for appearance requests, that they start at six. That what? If they are in the middle of a heated debate over something on the consent agenda, are they just going to stop that? And I, I think that the reason that the agenda is so loose because every meeting functions differently. Sometimes there's things to discuss, sometimes they're not. And that's why they are given the, you know, it will not start before 6 for the public hearing so that people know they have to be there by 6. But if the consent agenda runs long, if there's a lot of recognition resolutions, whatever, there's that window. So I, I think that we don't want to make it, we don't want to box everything in. Okay, Cheryl. I would agree. I'd say to um, send a clearer message to the public. I think that my, my suggestion is off the table now because it's inappropriate. But I'm thinking if we have the reader board so that when you're watching the assembly on television, waiting to come in for the public hearing, you'll know where they are and you can anticipate that they're going to be still working on this agenda for another half an hour. You can anticipate. And then secondly, um, I, I really have always hoped that we would encourage them to set a time limit on their supper. It is very frustrating. we will be a 15 minute break and then you don't see them again. Okay. I'm going to suggest that we say the uh, task force recommends you set, uh, uh, now pick a number 15 or 20 minutes. 20 then, seems fair. I think, huh? tw I think 20 for food is 20 minute fair. limit yeah. for the dinner break. Okay. We don't want them to have gastron testimony. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think we can even, you know, move forward with this. We can work on, maybe we can have it set up on this television that the dinner break is 20 minutes it started at this time so if people were watching at home they would know I mean I think that we can work on public knowing people what's going on mm -hmm. with that and I don't know okay um, I'll figure out some way to write that mm -hmm. paragraph B I just okay. done request that I be shown as recused on that one. Okay, we are recused. Amanda voted no on that. <laughs> Just recused. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, no, 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 nice. Hell no was you. No. <laughs> <laughs> recused. Yes, recused. I didn't have an opinion on it. <laughs> 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 I didn't want to do it. 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 Okay. All right. I wonder if it's worse to make a notice of this rather than just say. Okay, item C. Actually, I, I did calm it down. It was, it, this is more gentle than the previous version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this last one, I like it. My only thought is I don't think that it actually addresses assembly presence at public hearing. Yeah, oh, that's right. a good point. It's in the wrong place. But I think that it is a, a good idea. So maybe we, there, we're, we're simply, we, we have a whole section on... On this, maybe in the notice section. Uh, well, here it's in 7A actually. The identification of any issues that have been postponed, all items that have been acted upon, as well as any change okay. that has been made Thank regarding you. the order. So it's already covered. You can drop it, right? All right, drop. Yeah, drop. Okay. Any other recommendations for any other 
changes in the statute? No. Oh, are you are done. Only 25 Ooh. minutes late. That's a big deal. Mr. Haberman, do you want to add any comments? Uh, my comments here. Uh, are we an audience participation? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We are an audience. Yes, sir. Okay. I have a question to something you said earlier about on type on. Uh, you mentioned member yesterday's meeting invite by the assembly attorney. Can you ask? Can you tell me who who was in that meeting besides yourself and the, and the assembly attorney? Just Julia Tucker and I. I said that's all that showed up. Okay. No, wait a minute. I it had a meeting with Julia Tucker after we talked to. I asked after her. The, oh, Oh. It wasn't a Julia put an invite at the at the at that meeting for the No. Three weeks ago I had sent a note to Julia Tucker saying I'd love to talk to you about this. She was gone for two weeks. She showed up yesterday and said I'm available. So I went and had a meeting with Julia Tucker. Uh, it wasn't a meeting with all the task force. It was just a meeting with Jane. Because what she Julia had said was you're invited to meet with me. She's I had written her a note. She had written me a note. She said, I'm here. You can come. Talk to okay, me after your meeting. It wasn't meeting. what she was saying. It looked like the invite no, to the host. No, I went and had a meeting with Julia Tucker. Okay. That's the only thing. I was right. not invited. I was not invited. <laughs> None of these people. I had a private, secret, quiet <laughs> meeting behind closed doors. Oh. All right. Do it. Lay it down. Any other uh, questions, comments? Um, okay. the other what happens from here henceforth? Okay, what, what happens now is uh, Amanda and I clean up this document. This document becomes the draft. All of your names are attached to it. And this draft is set for public hearing for October 1st. I will attach the document to the website. I will send out a press release with the document attached. I will use social media to advertise the meeting. I will talk to all of my contacts around the city that I talked to before the previous meeting, and I will ask them to help spread the word. Everybody has wonderful groups of friends. I will also encourage you to talk to your people. We'll go to all, community, send it we'll go to all yeah. the community councils. It'll come back to everybody. I'll send everyone the press release. I will put the press release on the website so then it makes an easy link if you want to share it on Facebook or Twitter. We'll like your Facebook and we're page. looking at yeah. we'll like your beginning at 6 in the assembly chamber. 6 p.m. in the assembly chamber on October 1st. And I, I will communicate with you by email about uh, when the Rules Committee is actually going to assemble, I will ask uh, the, the representative who will be out of town if she can call in and therefore retain the meeting on the 3rd with the, uh, the Assembly Rules Committee. Uh, if that changes, I will update the website and notify the public. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done.